Does the Nintendo Switch need another retro-inspired 2D action platformer? I'd say the answer to that is, if done correctly with enough love and polish, and with an immense amount of fun packed in, yes. And luckily for us, that is exactly what the team over at Domesticated Ant Games, love the name, gave us with the release of Gravity Circuit. A Finland-based studio that has brought us games such as... Oh wait, this is their first game, which is absolutely insane. So today, let's go over my thoughts on Gravity Circuit and see if this is a game that maybe you should check out immediately. And to get the obvious out of the way first, this game is of course heavily inspired by the Mega Man X series. But they only use this legendary franchise as a blueprint for a very solid gameplay foundation on which to build an entirely new experience. Your story begins as Kai, a member of the Guardian Corps. As you await with your memory circuit shot like some badass robotic Jason Bourne, not aware of who you are or what in the hell is happening, immediately being thrust into a fast-paced battle against the Virus Army, a group of evil robots hell-bent on destroying the world inhabited by kind, mechanical-hearted, sentient robots. And after defeating the first level, you arrive at HQ, where you meet your supporting characters, filling you into exactly what is happening and who you are. This is also where you'll cash in the rewards that you earn throughout your playthrough and purchase power-ups. This is also where you'll select what stage you'll go to via your CO. Very similar to how you select these stages in Mega Man, you'll enter, fight your way through enemy after enemy, working your way to the level's boss. However, this really linear style approach to the stage design really allows the gameplay to shine with fast and fluid gameplay. With fast-paced, fluid fighting, using your fists, this time around instead of some pointless blaster, you know, making you get up and close with the enemies to duke it out never allowing the luxury of just sitting back and taking it easy. This fast-paced, fluid gameplay really reminds me of Sabotage Studios' action-adventure The Messenger, with very responsive controls and mechanics, including standards such as wall jumping, floor sliding, and grapple shot that can be used not only to swing from section to section, but also to grab on enemies and pull them towards you scorpion-style, which really comes in handy when you can grab onto the little bombs located around the stage and then just throw them, causing immediate chaos at incoming enemies. And while engaging in all this fast-paced combat, you need not to worry about falling in a well-placed hole or onto a bed of spikes. Because unlike platformers from the past that punished you with insta-death, if you <laughs> follow me on insta-death, if you even teeter too close to spikes, Gravity Circuit allows you to make these mistakes while taking off a significant chunk of health, but lets you immediately try again. And while some may see this as a bit too big of a crutch, I think that it's a really, really nice enhancement that encourages exploration, finding ways to tackle any given situation without the immediate threat of death. And this is in no way of saying that Gravity Circuit is easy. It can be a very challenging game, especially in terms of platforming, at certain points requiring really quick thinking and execution. You'll also, of course, gain access to a large variety of enhancements for Kai, but instead of in the traditional way of defeating a boss and then having immediate access to the power, this time around, you will obtain incremental enhancements such as learning a spin kick move, a power allowing you to jump on a temporary platform or a rush attack, etc. These will all open up to you after each level is beaten and can be purchased for a small fee by one of the NPCs at HQ. However, keep in mind, you can only equip four of these moves at a time so definitely make sure you look at yourself, your needs, and see what gels with you more appropriately. The graphics are of course done in that beautiful 16-bit style, with rich, bright, and colorful backgrounds, reminding me of some of the best-looking Game Boy Advance games, such as Metroid Fusion and Castlevania Aria of Sorrow, with highly detailed sprites and backgrounds with some very nice-looking character animations. The enemies are well distinguished from each other, each feeling unique with their own attacks and style, and this is especially true for the boss fights that will keep you on your toes, each having a new pattern to learn. Nothing in this game feels lazy, or like assets were reused to save work for the developers, with every stage being set to a linear design, yet every stage still feeling fresh and a contrast to the previous one. And of course, one of the biggest standouts for me, and one that deserves tons of praise, is the game's music. Composed by Dominic Ninmark, this soundtrack is a straight up a boppin' with that classic chiptune style, yet enhanced with modern tools and instruments, laying out a wide landscape of music to be enjoyed as you punch, kick, and grapple your way through stage after stage. With genres such as rock, metal, jazz, pop, 
and at times, all of these fused into one, it is a true masterpiece of a score. And by the way, as soon as the soundtrack is released, hopefully a physical copy is done, I will definitely be picking up day one. And if any of the music sounds familiar, this is because Dominic has also composed music for other projects, including one of my other favorite retro run and guns, Joy Masher's Contra Inspired Blazing Chrome. And with all that said, it still blows me away that this is the debut game for this studio. And to that I say, a bravo, a, a bravo, good sirs. And I guess you could say my only gripe is that I would have loved to have seen more replayability within each level. After beating the game, which clocks in at around three to four hours of gameplay, you do get a new game plus, yet the levels themselves don't offer really any replayability outside of traveling the same linear path as before. Whereas games like Mega Man X, each level had areas only accessible after obtaining certain power-ups. This, however, is a very small gripe, and hopefully could possibly be addressed with future DLC, along with the possibility of maybe allowing us to play as other characters after beating the game, that would be pretty sweet. All in all, Gravity Circuit is an awesome experience for anyone looking to scratch that itch for the Mega Man X style of classic action platformers. With near perfect gameplay mechanics, beautiful 16-bit graphics, and a slapping soundtrack, it is certainly a must play on the PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, and PC via Steam, but I think it fits absolutely perfectly on the Nintendo Switch, and is just another feather in the Switch's cap of excellent indie titles. But hey, what do you guys think? Have you already been playing through Gravity Circuit? And if so, what are your thoughts on it? I would love to know. Or is this a game that you're still kind of on the fence about? Let me know in the comments below. Go ahead and do a spin kick on that like and subscribe button if you would. It would definitely help out a lot. But most importantly, guys, have yourself a great day. Go say something nice to somebody. Do something cool. And as always, I will see you on the next video.